Oh, that was a stupid idea. It's been one of those kind of days. I've come across some flipping idiots today. But today we're going retro, we're going classic. Chicken chasseur or hunter's chicken because chasseur means hunter in French. Okay, not the hunter's chicken that you get with the barbecue sauce and the cheese and the bacon. That's, that's a different thing. But we all know what a chicken chasseur is. We all know what it is. Chicken cooked in a nice sauce with wine, tomatoes, mushrooms, bacon, and other things. And tarragon, that as well. Yes. Now I know what you're thinking. Adam, you don't like mushrooms, so why are you putting them in? Well, really, you can't make a chicken chasseur without mushrooms. And they kind of add flavor to dishes. It's not that I don't dislike them as such. It's more a kind of textural thing. You can't have mushrooms. Don't answer me back. I kind of like the flavor of mushrooms, but like I just said, it's more a textural thing. They're like eating slugs to me. Just, I can't get past it. Whether that's something from my childhood, I don't know. But listen, before we dive into it, do the usual thing. Hit subscribe and the gray notification bell because that is how YouTube tells you when I've uploaded. Or they should do. I've noticed that they slip up sometimes and don't send you notifications. Why is that YouTube? Susan. And at the end, if you enjoyed this video, then stick a like on it. But stay tuned, stay tuned, and you'll find out how to make a delicious chicken chasseur. Starting with chicken thighs, because again, you, but again, just like the other day with the chicken spicy kebab wrap thing, chicken thighs, they're cheap. All right, we're in lockdown. People have probably not got a job right now. You know, they're trying to save pennies. Use chicken thighs, they're amazing. And it makes the whole dish a bit cheaper. Yes, chicken thighs. Let's stop waffling and get on with it. Let's go. Chicken thighs, chicken, 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 chicken thighs. Now you can see, look, they're quite decent size ones. If they're a bit smaller, use five, maybe six. So I'm just gonna season the skin just lightly with a pinch of salt, kind of pat it in. Oh, oh, ah, ah, nearly put my chicken hands in that salt then. And we need to get some color on those, so let's get them in the pan. So I've got a frying pan here, we're gonna get that onto a heat. Fairly high, sort of medium high. Then just a touch of oil, not much, I'd say about two teaspoons is plenty. Then we're gonna lay the chicken thighs down, skin side down, and basically you wanna get some really good color on these. Get that skin nice and crisp. Spend some time doing it, take your time with it, because the payoff is gonna be worth it. Look, see? Look at that wonderful sort of golden mahogany color. That's what you want. Make sure you get the sides as well, kind of lean it at the side of the pan, get all edges. Because you don't want soggy, flabby chicken skin in your chasseur. So I'm gonna take those out. I'm gonna leave some of the fat in there, but I don't know if you can see, there is a lot of fat in there. So I'm gonna drain some of that off. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my pan there. Now all those chicken bits in there, we're not gonna waste them. But I've got my other pan here, which is what I'm gonna cook the chasseur in. The reason I'm using two pans is because this is really good at frying and getting things crisp. This is not so great at getting crispy chicken skin. It's just the material that it's made of. It's not like the best to get crispy chicken skin. So that's why I've done it in separate pans. What I'm gonna do is take the wine, and just add that to the pan we fried the chicken in. Then get that back onto the gas, and I'm gonna reduce that down by half. What that does is it concentrates the flavor, gets rid of the raw alcohol, because you don't want raw alcohol in your dinner. And whilst it's ticking away, we'll get on, slice up the bacon, dice up the garlic, chop the mushrooms, and get cooking, yeah. Now I'm using smoked back bacon, because I couldn't get streaky, but either raw is fine, but make sure it's smoked, so you get that nice, well, smoky flavor. And literally all I'm gonna do is just slice it up into bits. Garlic, again, we're just gonna slice that, just roughly. Next, the mushrooms. That dirty little bum fungus. And just kind of remove off any dirt, any mud. Now, there is an old saying with mushrooms is that you can't wash them. It's actually not true. You can wash them, it's just that you can't leave them soaking in water. So if you do need to give them a very quick sort of rinse, then that's fine. Just obviously make sure that you pat them dry because as soon as they sit in water, that's where the problem lies. And literally all I'm gonna do with the mushrooms is just slice them up, just roughly. There we go, that's the mushrooms done. Now the only other thing you need to prep is your shallots. Now, I did these last night. 
because it's a bit of a laborious task, if I'm honest. If you think peeling an onion is difficult, try peeling flipping shallots. All right, they do take a bit of time, but they are worth it for a dish like this because yes, you can use onion, but shallots are sweeter, they're milder, and they just go nicer in a dish like this. So peel them the night before, just sit in front of the TV, just peel them, and I've cut them into fairly large pieces like that. So yeah, that's the prep done really, so we can start cooking. Let's get on with it. I bet this camera's gonna flip out now because it's not gonna focus on this white bit, is it? Yeah, look at it, look at it. Anyway, right, so let's get the pan onto a heat, sort of medium heat. Again, just a trickle of oil, then in with the bacon, and also the mushrooms. There we go. Start getting that bacon nice and crisp, brown off the mushrooms. The mushrooms will release a bit of water, but that will evaporate quite quickly. But listen, it's all about colour, okay? Colour means flavour. If you could smell in this kitchen, boys and girls, you'd be salivating. But look, you can see it's kind of starting to crisp up. The mushrooms are starting to turn a nice colour. Still a little way to go, but we're going to add the shallots. And again, we're going to stir those around. We want to get a little bit of colour on those as well. Eventually. And after about a minute or so, we're going to add some butter. That tablespoon is going to be fine because there is some fat left in there. And then I'd say about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of plain flour. And what the flour and butter is going to do is help thicken it. So again, just kind of mix that through. We'll go in with the bay leaves, give them a scrunch. Get the garlic in as well. Next, I'm going to add the wine and chickeny bits from when we fried off the chicken thighs earlier. And that wine is going to help lift off all those bits from the pan. Just kind of stir it in. Then in with the chicken stock. Now at this point as well, I've preheated the oven to get it nice and hot, ready for the chasseur. So you don't want to wait around for a flipping oven to heat up. Just get it done as you're cooking this out. Then we're gonna go in with half a can of chopped tomatoes. Now we need to season this up, okay? Now I'm not gonna add any salt because there's salt in the stock, salt in the bacon. We also seasoned the chicken thighs as well. But what I am gonna add is some tarragon, sort of a level-ish teaspoon of tarragon. Be careful with this herb. It's strong stuff. If you use too much, it's just gonna taste medicinal. And then just a little bit of pepper, just a little pep, a little pep. You mix that in. Then we're just gonna nestle the chicken thighs on the top, being very careful because we don't wanna undo all this, this crispiness on the top. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of pepper just on the top of the skin. Okay, and that's it. Your chasseau is assembled. It's ready for the oven. Not like that, because that's really hot. Use oven gloves. <laughs> And that's gonna take like 45 minutes to cook, uncovered, and check it halfway through, because you might need to top it up with a little bit of water if it looks like it's drying out too much. So yeah, leave that 45 minutes till the chicken's cooked through. In the meantime, you can kind of make your mash, get your veg ready, anything else you want serving with it. And that's chicken chasseur. F***ing trolls. Giving me these, giving me these, that's what they're doing. Giving me these on the channel. Yeah. Like, you know, someone's written about my chili con carne recipe. Nothing else than just the word yuck. Y U K, yuck. Debbie, why is it yuck? Because actually, it's one of my most popular recipes. If you've made it and you don't like it, I'm sorry, Debbie. All, all I can do is say, I'm sorry, it's not to your tastes. Just yuck. Not why. Not, is there anything that she didn't like about it? Just yuck, 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 Fucking yuck. Peter says on my plowman's lunch, just get on with it. Too much talk at the beginning. St I like to talk. It's an old BT phrase, isn't it? Old BT, the old phone company. Used to be a phrase for theirs back in the day. You know, BT, it's good to talk. And it is good to talk, Peter. So I'm telling you to shut up. Mind your own business. A lot of them, some of them I just delete, right? Some of them I just go, just, you're obviously trying to get a reaction out of me and it's working because clearly I'm ranting on camera, but that's what you want. Well, you're getting it. You're getting a reaction. Don't feed the trolls. You know when people say, oh, don't get down to their level. Don't get down to their level. I say no. If someone's purposely going after you, and attacking your character, attacking your delicious, wonderful food. No, you get down to their level and lower. Get right down, get underneath them. Get underneath them and just hike their flipping feet from underneath them. Maybe I should troll them. 
get under a bridge where they live, near where they live, I'll get under the bridge. And then just sort of, as they're crossing over the bridge, I'll get out and demand a toll. And if they don't, I'll throw them in the river. I'll be a real troll. Not an online troll, a real troll. Who's that trip trap tracking over my bridge, said the troll. Adam, that's who, Adam the troll. Snatching you and throwing you in the river. <laughs> just, <sighs> let's make some mashed potato. Look at this delicious thing. Just gonna taste the sauce for seasoning. Don't think it will need any. Perfect, perfect as it is. Now, just leave it to cool for a few minutes because you'll burn the roof of your mouth off. Got some mash on the go there. I'm gonna serve it up with that. But there we have it. Easy to do, chicken chasseur. Now, that wasn't difficult to make, was it? But listen, let me know in the comments, what did you think of my chicken chasseur? Is it French enough for you? Is it retro enough for you? Is it delicious enough for you? But also, if you enjoyed it, stick a like on it, share it across your social media. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe, because that's the only way you'll get notified every time you upload a video. But listen, I'm gonna go, because I need to eat this, because it's my dinner. And I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. Bye for now. Let's go. I'll see you later. What?